Hello and welcome to my basic Amber guide. In this guide I'm going to go over Amber, what he is good at, what he is bad at. I'm also going to go over his growth rates. I'm going to talk about things like opportunity cost of running the unit. Uh, so to begin, here are his growth rates. He has 65% HP, 45% strength, 25% dex, 30% speed, 35% defense, 5% res, 35% luck and 15% build. On his starting class of Lance Cavalier, he has plus 10% in HP, strength, dex, speed, defense, res, and luck. So his bases are kind of geared towards like a heavy strength build. 45% strength is pretty high, and his speed is kind of lower, so it seems to me that he wants to be either a crit machine because of his decent luck growth combined with his strength or just something that hits really hard. Now he joins in chapter eight and he is deployed, but you can't really like customize his inventory. He's fully customizable and load outable on chapter nine and onward. He also has a pretty good passive called aspiring hero. If no other units are within one space of unit or foe, Grants hit plus 20 at the cost of a void minus 10. So I'm going to show how this works. So it's very simple. If you and the foe don't have things directly next to them, you get Aspiring Hero. So right now you can see that my hit rate is 95%. So if I go and attack, it'll say Aspiring Hero, it triggers. And it also shows it on top of his name. Now if we park Chloe, next to him while he's attacking. So he's gonna be moving down to this tile. He now loses it, so now he's just at 75%. And if I attack, it won't trigger. So you can see it doesn't trigger. And alternatively, if I just have Chloe move next to the enemy, the same thing is true. So if any unit is next to you or the target. So you can see it doesn't trigger here either. And it includes enemies. So if two enemies are standing next to each other, he won't get Aspiring Hero. If an ally is next to that enemy, he won't get Aspiring Hero. However, in the one use case, like let's say Chloe is right here, you can avoid being next to your other units or other, like, you know, you can still isolate this enemy. So in this case, it will trigger because nothing is adjacent to either of them. So you can use basic positioning and just understanding of how the skill works, like how his passive works to increase his hit rates. He's also really good at shooting down or hitting isolated opponents. He would be really good on warrior, but we'll get into that pretty soon. So let's jump into the next section. So what are some pros and cons for the unit? Uh, for pros, I would say he actually has surprisingly high base strength, some of the highest early game. He also has really high strength growth. Uh, some other aspects of him that are nice are his passive increasing his accuracy, uh, the fact that he has kind of decent luck build so he kind of can run a crit build. Those are, I would say, his primary advantages and standout features. Uh, for cons, it's definitely his low speed. Um, I, I think that's like the main one. I don't want to say there's too much else that's like horribly wrong with him. He's basically never going to double unless you really go out of your way to fix his speed by running something like Speed Taker and drastically spiking up his speed and changing his class. But he's basically a solid heavy hitter with really good strength growth. 45% strength growth is no joke. That's a huge advantage, if, especially if you're just looking to deal a ton of damage in a single hit. So he might potentially be able to hit Panette levels of damage output by the time you get Panette if you run him as one of your mainline units. So he could be kind of like a second Panette in a way. Um, but for other downsides, I would say there are stronger units to run earlier game. He, do, he does join in Chapter 8, so it's not like the earliest availability, but it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. Uh, for level of investment, like how much is required to get him online, I would say it's low. You basically just use him and then reclass him to Warrior. There's other classes he can go on, and we'll go over them. But I would say Warrior is a really good use case for him. It allows him to increase his own hit rates against isolated flyers that are approaching, and his base strength also lends itself to hitting really hard, on top of potentially 
running a crit axe build or a crit brave axe, or I'm sorry, a brave axe, like Ike engraved build. So he has some options. So level investment definitely low. So let's jump into classes. So let's talk about classes on Amber. What should he go into? So funny enough, even though his passive is aspiring hero, he actually can't directly class into a hero. However, he would be decent at hero. He has high enough strength that he would hit pretty hard on it, as well as being able to contribute through Brave Assist. So this would be a pretty strong option for him. He's potentially one of the best Halberdiers in the game because he has bad speed and bad speed growth, and Halberdier doesn't care about speed, but he does have 45% base strength growth, and you combine that with Halberdier's 15, and you're looking at a 60% strength growth unit that would probably nuke everything on like Silver and Brave Lance pretty reliably. So he might potentially be one of the best Halberdiers in the game just because of his strength growth. And his starting strength is high enough that it's worth running this on him. Like it's definitely a solid option for him. Now it doesn't matter what his Lance proficiency is because Halberdier always has S. So something on Hero would allow him to use, you know, higher tier Spears, Lances in this case, but it, Halberdier doesn't matter. Uh, but it, it would be a good class for him. Royal Knight, I wouldn't put him on. It's basically just like a weaker Paladin in terms of damage output, but it would give him access to staves, so it gives him some utility. Berserker could be decent just for the strength growth. He would be 75% strength growth, which is unreal. You could put him on Berserker for a few, like, like 10 level ups, and then switch him on to Warrior if you want, but Warrior definitely is more flexible. And between the two, Warrior is a little bit faster and has access to bows, whereas Berserker is generally slower. And also Merciless is way better than Smash Plus. Merciless allows him to combo off of things. So like even if you have a weak unit, tap something and breaks it, and then he can come in with a huge axe attack and just smack it down pretty, pretty reliably. So I would say Warrior, Halberdier, Archer, Sniper, Bow Knight. So Sniper and Bow Knight, he could be decent at these. I feel like he's just better off being on Warrior. But he arguably could be a good Sniper and Bow Knight because of his strength growth. And he would be able to shoot really heavy, like shoot really high damage. Which doesn't really make sense if you understand the mechanics of bows because they have a, they have a finite draw weight. So it's... <laughs> All right. Anyways, I, I actually shoot a longbow in real life, so I understand how these things work. Because, like, so, like, for example, if a steel bow had a draw weight of, like, 50 pounds, a uh, unit who's stronger won't be able to get more damage out of the arrows because it's still just a 50-pound bow. But ignoring uh, real-life mechanics. Uh, all right, General and Great Knight. These could be decent options for him. I would say there's better tanks, though. His defense growth isn't high enough to put him on these. Uh, he could make decent use of them, but I would say better class. There's other classes or other units that are better at tanking than he is. Paladin is a good option for him. Uh, Lance Paladin, he does get S rank. This gives him mobility. This gives him just like, you know, some decent utility with Pivot. As far as growths are concerned, on Paladin, he would be 60% strength growth and his speed would be 45%. So he's still, he's, he's basically never gonna be fast enough to double things, but Paladin wouldn't be a bad option for him if you want to go like a more higher, higher mobility route. Uh, Wolf Knight, I would skip it. <laughs> he could run Wolf Knight, but I don't think you're taking advantage of his high strength. Though potentially if you get his strength up and then he's on daggers, that could be really good on a silver dagger. So that's, there's some potential there, but it might take some time for it to get online. Uh, Griffin Knight, I would skip. I don't see the advantage of putting him on Griffin Knight. Wyvern, he could do. Um, unfortunately, he can't Brave Axe on Wyvern, which is, is, you know, dumb. But he could Brave Lance on Wyvern, and it might be decent. So, But Halberdier would be better at this. But if you want him on Wyvern, he could Brave Lance on a Flying class, which is amazing. And Wyvern would put him at 65% strength growth, which is pretty disgusting, and base 18 strength once he, once he classes into it. So as soon as you get him, if you if you master your seal and then second seal him into Wyvern, he's at 18 strength, which is pretty high, plus like the 65% strength growth. 
So he could reasonably be a Brave Lance nuke if you ran um, Ike or Roy on the Brave Lance. So that is something he could do. I don't know how good it would be. It's definitely going to be less damage output than Halberdier because Halberdier can do the same thing but guarantee quadding on Brave Lance. So I would say if you want to go for like a dedicated Brave Lance nuke, it should be on Halberdier. But he could probably deal some decent damage just with the first hit of a Brave Lance if you get his strength up enough, like if he just keeps leveling up. Uh, an air raid is nice, but he's, he's probably not going to be doubling things unless it's like armor. I would not put him on any magic classes. Magic classes, he has 0% magic growth. So if you do it, it's a meme. I don't recommend it. Same thing with um, Martial Master, High Priest. Anything with punching, you want to have high magic and high strength, or at least medium in both, because it takes your average. So you want both of them as high as humanly possible. And if you only have one stat, you kind of suffer. You want like mixed growths to run these. And then on Thief, he wouldn't be a bad thief. Like, if you, if you put him on Thief or Wolf Knight, he would be okay, because his strength growth will eventually start pushing his damage numbers up. But I don't think his speed will ever get up there, so it's kind of just a waste. So, like, he'll hit really hard once. <laughs> He's not going to double, really. Uh, so, yeah, best classes. Uh, Wyvern for Brave Lance, maybe Silver Spear build for poking, if you want the flying. I would say Halberdier or Warrior, definitely the options to go with. Paladin and Wyvern are, like, secondary options you can consider. Uh, warrior, yeah, Warrior, Halberdier. Hero, I would say, is also like a secondary option. I would prioritize putting him on Halberdier or Warrior. I think those are his best classes. They take advantage of his high strength. Warrior enables him to run a crit axe or a brave axe build. It also allows him to shoot down flyers, so he has that utility. And he will shoot really hard, <laughs> which makes no sense at all on bows uh, mechanically, but he will generally one-shot a flyer because of his pretty high base strength and his strength growth. So he will snowball. Uh, so like Some people that like Etie like to cite her high strength, but he basically has better base strength and also does have 5% more strength growth than her and better bases. So he basically is like Etie, but way better. He does have slightly less speed, but if like you're not going to double an enemy Griffin Knight or an enemy wyvern. It's not happening. They're very fast. Unless you're also exceptionally fast and you have a good build, you need both of those things to double those, you're not doubling those. They hit like 40 speed end game. There's no way in hell he's gonna catch up to those, but he can shoot them hard once and that's all you need. So him on warrior makes a lot of sense. Him on halberdier makes a lot of sense. Honestly, he might be an A, possibly an S tier on halberdier if used correctly. Same thing on warrior. Uh, I'm going to try running him this match, or this uh, playthrough, my fifth playthrough, and we'll see how he performs. But his base stats are pretty high. Like, this is him not promoted. And then once you put him on Warrior, he immediately hits 21 strength. So pretty decent bases. So let's talk about early equipment and upgrades and engravings. So early equipment, he starts with this inventory. You can give him a Steel Lance. I think that's probably going to help him out a lot. The Killer Lance is nice early on because sometimes it gets crits. It's hard to get it to pop off until after Chapter 11 when you can put a crit engraving on it. Then it starts becoming pretty reliable. But before then, it's just kind of like a 20 to 30% chance you get a crit. Now you can increase, you can like improve this. I would say early game, because you get him so late, you're probably going to have dumped most of your resources in other units. So like if we look at my Alir, I have the Steel Sword plus three. I have a Steel Lance, two Steel Lance plus ones. I upgraded Thunder to plus three. I'm going to be trying out the Dire Thunder build. I actually got the Dire Thunder on one reset, which is not bad. I had to spend 3k <laughs> S or, uh, Bond Fragments, though. Uh, so there's that. Uh, for engravings, basically any weapons that are good on Chloe are also good on him. So this particular Steel Lance, or if you want to put Beginnings on it, is really good. You can also put... Uh, Leafs engraving on a Steel Lance, and that would be pretty good. It does increase the weight, but he's not going to double anyway, so he basically just becomes like a super poker. He just like pokes an enemy once for big damage, and that's what he's going for until you get him on Warrior or Halberdier. Now, both require a second seal, so it can be kind of difficult to get him upgraded because every unit is competing for those early game Master Seals, and it can be difficult to particularly focus on one unit and is it worth it to upgrade him like master seal and then second seal him i'm not so sure that it is uh, that doesn't mean that he's not viable or not decent 
It's just that other units are going to be competing for those seals. Like, they just only have so many before chapter 10, which is when everything changes. And then you start, the game starts handing you tons of units like candy. Like, they give you Ivy, Kagetsu, and Zelkov immediately after chapter 11. And then they hand you Fogato, Bune, who isn't really good. And then Pandreo, who is really good. Uh, Fogato's decent, Pandreo's good, and then they just keep handing you crazy units, so it starts to get a little nutty. The game just starts handing you tons of really strong units. So, so that's it for the upgrades. I don't recommend upgrading Iron Lance or Iron Great Lance at all. I don't think it's worth it. I think it's a waste of materials, to be honest. You're better off upgrading things that can scale well into the end, the end game, to the middle of the end game. Uh, for Emblem Rings, for early game em Emblem Rings, you could run Marth on him, you could run Sigurd on him, both of those would be fine. You could run Leaf on him, though the build isn't going to help him, it's more for the health and the defense, it gives him one defense. Uh, you could run Micaiah if you want to try to power level him by letting him deal damage and heal, but it's going to be difficult to set that up in some of these earlier maps. Roy is a good option for him as well. For early game passives, he does start with 200 SP, so if you get a Bond Ring or an Emblem Ring on him early, you do have potential to hit 1k SP before ta chapter 10, but you basically have to get him two level ups on an emblem ring. So if I get him two level ups right now, he'll just get 100 SP, so I'd have to get four level ups, which is not going to happen. Uh, two level ups is reasonable, but you're going to have to like set up kills for him, feed him kills, if you want to get him canter early or something like that. Uh, Lance power is decent on him, but you could always unlock all that stuff mid-game. Honestly, Halberdier with Lance Power might be disgusting on him. It might be really, really strong. So, there's a build idea for you right there. You would do Brave Lance with Ike or Roy, probably Ike. And then you would do Lance Power 1, and then eventually Lance Power 2 for the increased damage. And you throw him on Halberdier. So this way he's quadding off of Halberdier and his damage output. So Ike would give gives plus 3 might. So Ike alone gives him plus 12 damage while quadding, and then Lance Power 1 gives him plus 8 more. So it's plus 20 damage for, for 1k SP and an engraving. And then also, if you upgrade the Brave Lance, that boosts the damage even further. So he could be an absolute monster on Halberdier. So there's definitely potential there. I think there's some untapped potential. Some people probably have already run him like this, but I'd say overall people don't know about this build, but now you do. All right. So I'm definitely going to be running him in this way in <laughs> my next run. Or I'm sorry, in this run, actually. I'm going to be investing in him. Honestly, let's do this. Let's let's commit a little bit. Let's take... Unfortunately, I was trying to do like a Sage Unaka. Someone's like recommended that. But she's fallen behind just because I have to feed so many other things kills. So I'm going to give him Micaiah. <laughs> just to give him something. Micaiah. So that he can get to 1k SP. And then I'm going to give Unaka something else. It's going to be really difficult to get her on Sage. She has to hit like level 21. So I don't know how viable that is. It's even possible. Doesn't seem very likely. You'd have to just power level her throughout the entire run. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful. Uh, feel free to drop a comment as to how you use Amber. Uh, especially if you have any interesting tactics on him. And I'll see you in the next one.